Hey, I'm Dr. John Wagner from the Field Museum in Chicago. I'm here at the BioBlitz at Indiana Dunes National Lakeshore with National Geographic and the National Park System. A lot of sponsors. It's a great event. The weather has been a little bit off for us. I'm here looking for insects, especially beetles, and the ones that I really want to find and show people are tiger beetles, which are creatures, there are a couple in the jar here, they like sunshiny days, <laughs> which we haven't had. These are forest beetles right here that come out on the path and hang around in light spots. These are actually collected by a colleague that found them hiding under bark because it was too cold for them to be out on the trails. <laughs> now, historically, there was a man at University of Chicago Victor Shelford, who worked on tiger beetles and found, oh, some eight different species here in the park, and he discovered that there were different species on the beach, behind the beach, up in the pine woods, and back in the oak woods, and then in the beech maple forest. So it turns out that the larvae of these beetles prefer different soil types, and so that's why they sort themselves out that way. These tiger beetles are, are so named because they're, they're tiger-like predators. They lurk around and rush out and grab things and chew them up like a tiger would. Even the larvae do that. The larvae hide in little burrows and will lunge themselves out and grab unsuspecting prey as it comes by. So this type of study has been going on for years and years before there was even a contemplation of having a park here. People came out from the city of Chicago and surrounding area, oh, at the turn of the century, to enjoy the dunes. Before that, the Indians were here, thinking this is a sacred spot. In fact, a, a book has been written called Sacred Sands that pinpoints this, this part of the planet as a very special place. Uh, fortunately, there was compromise between industry and, and conservation, preservation, so we now have this park preserved, and people can come and study and enjoy the outdoors and find out what's here and learn more about the environment. So, rock on, friends, enjoy. Thank you very much, and I take it you can see lots of these beetles in the Field Museum? Find out some more? <laughs> well, we have we have more beetles than anyone would want to look at at the Field Museum. In fact, in North America, there are probably some 24,000 species of beetles. So listing them is a daunting process. These are actually pretty good-sized beetles. The ones I actually work with are the size of pinheads. And it's kind of hard to talk to people about those because you have to have good drawings or a microscope. and. To touch them is almost to destroy them. And then you have to dissect them to see what species they might be. So you can imagine you know, working with a pinhead-sized beetle under a microscope, trying to probe, find out what it is. It's a challenge. But it's fun. And of course, everything gets labeled. You've got to have a good label or there's no point in making the collection. You have to know where it comes from who collected it, under what circumstances it was collected. Because if you find something that's that's unique, that's unusual, then someone might want to go back and find another one if it's, if it's very unusual. Right. People do that. 